Hello everyone, my name is Swamil Gupta. I am an AI strategy and monetization advisor based in Sweden. Uh, and I help companies develop monetization strategies to uh, develop uh, digital products and services, to establish uh, digital business, and to monetize their data and AI investments. And uh, I want to welcome uh, you all for this presentation. Uh, just before we start, uh, I want to inform you that I'm going to be uh, available. I'm going to be live when this presentation is played. So if you have any questions or any inputs, uh, please do comment and I will respond to you immediately. So let's get started. Uh, the topic for today is uh, monetization readiness for realizing digital manufacturing strategy. So before we get uh, to digital manufacturing, let's uh, understand what do we mean uh, by monetization. And here, uh, even though monetization has uh, different definitions, uh, we are interested in monetization in the context of organizational strategy. So uh, in this regard, we define monetization as the process of realizing economic value from data and AI assets and capabilities uh, by unlocking the insights and, and using them for better business, business decisions that lead to better financial performance. The reason for defining monetization in this way is because we want to focus on some of the key uh, aspects. Uh, the first one is that uh, it should have uh, it should have an uh, impact on the financial performance. Uh, that means uh, whatever initiatives we run should either contribute to the top line or to the bottom line of the company. And this is really the core purpose why we are doing it. Uh, second, we want to focus on value realization rather than creation. That means it's our responsibility to identify opportunities in the organization where uh, we can successfully uh, deploy our solutions and create value for the organization. The third aspect is about uh, business ownership. That means we want to be proactive and uh, we want to take the responsibility of identifying what capabilities we have as an organization and how do we use data and AI in developing a good competitive strategy. And the fourth point is that the measure of our success uh, depends upon utilization. So we're not interested in those assets which are under development or which are uh, not uh, deployed. We, are, we want our solutions to be adopted by more and more people so that they can produce returns. So with this context uh, of monetization, let's uh, move ahead. Uh, why is monetization so uh, important for us right now? If you look at the global uh, statistics, we see that uh, around 70% of the AI initiatives are not showing any uh, returns or showing very, very little uh, returns and less than 12% of the use cases are actually uh, going beyond the pilot stage. Uh, less than two out of five organizations are uh, making uh, get significant in uh, who make significant investments uh, do not report any business gains from AI. So this is a big problem for the uh, for the entire uh, for the entire global community. And while there are many different reasons why this happens, uh, the root cause, which I uh, based on my understanding is the weak business ownership or basically lack of business ownership because when you don't have the business ownership uh, you lack a coherent strategy and then you do not invest in building your capabilities which results in low adoption and low utilization of solution which eventually results in low ROI and low impact and when you have low ROI it further erodes uh, the business confidence so you end up getting into this vicious cycle uh, and get into this trap where it becomes more and more difficult for you to monetize. Now, moving on to uh, digital manufacturing, and uh, I assume that the viewers are familiar with the concept, but I would like to share a few uh, slides just to set the context. Uh, the two main drivers of digital manufacturing are number one, there's, there's been uh, quite, uh, there's been a radical change in the buying habits of the consumers. Today's, today's consumers are more demanding. Uh, they want more customized products and services, they want more customized experience, and they want uh, more flexible delivery models. At the same time, we see that the business landscape is also changing drastically. That means there is more disruption, there is more uh, competition, and because of the influx of technology uh, and technology-led innovations, the product life cycles is shortening gradually, and this is putting a huge amount of pressure on the organizations to change their current manufacturing system. Uh, digital manufacturing is 
about getting new capabilities and the essence of digital manufacturing is strategic flexibility or strategic agility which is nothing but the operational capability to rapidly switch between different manufacturing strategies uh, if you see traditionally uh, organizations choose one or the other quadrant so either you are a mass uh, producer or you are a flexible uh, manufacturer or you are a small batch manufacturer but each of these strategies have their own uh, challenges what we are targeting is this quadrant where you can you have the efficiency of mass production but at the same time you also have the uh, you can also handle the variability just like in a flexible in a flexible manufacturing system and this means that you need new set of capabilities and these new capabilities are uh, production and process agility at scale uh, you need to be uh, you need the ability to experiment and learn uh, you need the ability to integrate customer experience into a manufacturing process and finally you need the capability to manage different types of variability whether it is customizations whether it is uh, demand fluctuations or whether it is product runs uh, with this uh, in mind uh, organizations are developing their digital manufacturing strategy um, a typical uh, digital manufacturing strategy will have three components the first component is the analytic strategy which is the digital aspect which is how do we create uh, benefits from the manufacturing data the second is the manufacturing capability which is uh, how do we translate these benefits into concrete manufacturing outcomes and the third component is the business strategy where, which is uh, how do we uh, how do we realize the business goals or business objectives uh, through these outcomes how do we monetize these outcomes and all these three components uh, work within the fourth component which is the leadership strategy uh, which is about setting the goal setting the vision and leading the change now the reason why we are not able to monetize digital manufacturing is because we have a significant gaps in each of these components so let's look at what are some of these gaps uh, let's start with the uh, leadership and business strategy while many companies want say that they want to be digital and they want to be data driven there are very few companies who have clear business objectives that specify what does it mean right what kind of company would you become once you become digital and because of that there is a uh, very little incentive there is very little, uh, little sense of urgency uh, in the business uh, leaders and you see that uh, because of this uh, because of this there is a lack of business ownership and there is lack of clear outcomes so even though companies are investing into digital they do not know what they are aiming for or what uh, what kind of capabilities uh, are they or what kind of outcomes are they looking for the uh, second aspect or the second uh, component is the manufacturing capability uh, now if ai or data is the brain uh, then the manufacturing capability the uh, the it and ot systems are the body if you want to execute something then we need the body to be aligned with the brain and if we see the, the traditional manufacturing capability we see that it is uh, very it has very low flexibility it is not very uh, responsive it is incompatible with the agility that we are looking from in the data, in the data driven uh, development and that's why it really limits our capability to create an impact and this is a, a cause of concern because as business leaders it's our responsibility to develop these capabilities to upgrade our infrastructure the third component is the analytic strategy which has its own set of issues so i have uh, i've captured these uh, issues in a acronym called fluids so basically uh, we lack the feedback from actual users in production uh, we lack the life cycle management uh, that is deployment and maintenance of data and ai assets utilization and adoption integration with uh, it and ot systems and processes uh, data availability data quality and uh, simulation of uh, business scenarios you know so you have different set of challenges in different components of digital manufacturing strategies and now that we know uh, uh, these challenges we need to overcome them and uh, no organization has infinite resources uh, to overcome all these challenges overnight and even if organization had uh, unlimited resources you still cannot you still don't have the time or the uh, capability or the capacity to make these changes so that means if we want to change then we need to have a plan and this plan is what uh, we refer to as the monetization readiness so now that we are now that we are uh, 
now that we want to uh, monetize the digital manufacturing let's look at some key principles that will help us do so the first principle is to focus on the right business outcomes match capability with intelligence and find value in business scenarios and let's look at each of these one by one uh, you need to you need to focus on the right business outcomes there, there's a difference uh, between benefits and outcomes you should always focus on on the outcomes benefits are basically estimated potential value it's always a it is more indicators of business success but outcomes are the measurable uh, realized value which can be uh, measured by a financial accounting system the reason why we the reason why we want to focus on outcomes and not benefit is that the same benefit can result in vastly different uh, outcomes just to give an example let's say the benefit that we are creating through our data and ai initiative is a 20% productivity gain now depending upon the capability of a company uh, they will realize different outcomes so, com so a, a company which has a more mature process might be able to uh, convert this 20% productivity gain into 20% more output while a company with uh, less maturity may waste this uh, productivity gain in uh, through, through rework now as business owners there will be multiple opportunities that we will have and it's our job to select what is the right one you know the right the right opportunity is the one where you can get the results faster where you can get the results easier so it takes time uh, it's uh, the concept wise it is very very easy but it, it's really very difficult in practice so you need to put that effort to find the right outcome to find the right opportunity but but that effort that you put in today will actually pay you uh, the pay you the reward because it will be easier uh, you you will be able to see the impact very very easily that so definitely uh, so that's why you should not stop looking you should uh, you should definitely try to find the right business outcome which will help you monetize uh, your um, your monetize your, your capabilities uh, easily the the second principle is to match capability with intelligence so if you want to uh, monetize your, uh, your uh, if you want to monetize your strategy uh, if you want to monetize your digital manufacturing capability then you need to critically assess and test your current capability you need to understand where what capability do you really have and what you do not possess then you focus on those opportunities where you can match these intelligence with this capability because if there is a match then it is very easy to to uh, to show the returns it's very easy to achieve the impact but if you do not have the capabilities then you need to do that work and let's say you come to a situation where uh, you, you you're not able to find a single opportunity where which does not require uh, some kind of an effort or some kind of development in that case you should have a financial plan so that you can budget the investments you can budget the effort that you need to build these capabilities and you need to uh, put that in your in the ROI cal calculation uh, when you have multiple opportunities this kind of assessment of ROI will help you prioritize your opportunities in the right way uh, the, the third aspect is to find value in business scenarios now many people uh, say that they are not able to identify value and one of the reason is that most processes that you see today they are optimized for a certain best opening point this is where you operate most likely and the opportunities to add value could lie beyond the most likely scenario so you have to look you have to change your perspective you have to identify new scenarios where you can find the opportunities uh, just let me just give you an example uh, let's say the uh, the the demand forecasting forecasting systems you know uh, they work they have worked very well before the covid but when the outbreak happened these models uh, struggled to predict the right outcome because the because such a fluctuation or such a drop in demand that was uh, uh, what we have observed during the outbreak was never considered as a scenario we never thought that the demand would just evaporate and uh, you you have to forecast something that is uh, 20 or uh, that is 50 or 60% below your current level but if you could change your perspective right you might find new opportunities you might find ways to uh, deploy your, or uh, apply your uh, data and ai capabilities in new ways and once you start doing once you start identifying these opportunities you will see that there are so many different opportunities in, in every organization uh, and this would really help you uh, strengthen your value proposition this will really help you strengthen your business case 
Uh, one good technique to do that is called design of experiments. Uh, just check it out. It's a Six Sigma technique. It helps you simulate business scenarios with different business conditions and help you identify what would happen. So you can do a lot of what if analysis. What would happen if your demand goes drops by 40%? What would happen if suddenly your one of your major supplier leaves? You know, so these kind of situations are great sources of value. And if you start thinking your perspective and if you start thinking in terms of scenarios, you will find so many different uh, opportunities where you can monetize your digital manufacturing strategies or your you can have, you can monetize your data and AI capabilities. Uh, in the start uh, of the presentation, we spoke about the vicious cycle of the monetization. Now that we have gone through the principles, let's try to bring it together and see if we can uh, how can we create a virtuous cycle of monetization and have a sustainable way of discovering and delivering value. So the starting point of if you're really serious about monetization, the starting point is the proactive business ownership. When you take responsibility and you take accountability of creating the uh, creating the financial impact. The next step is to assess the potential benefits that are created by your data and AI assets. Then you need to identify the opportunities in your area or in another uh, domain. Define the business outcomes and returns. Uh, if, you, if you think you need to develop some capabilities, go and secure the sponsorship. Develop these capabilities, orchestrate supporting activities, orchestrate uh, collaboration across, uh, around the organization and ensure that and see, uh, uh, see the project to, to, to completion. You will, that is how you will be able to generate the impact. That's how you'll be able to measure uh, the, the impact. And once you do this a couple of times, it will give you that kick. And more you more impact you create, more impact you would like to create. And this is how you create the virtuous cycle of uh, monetization. And this is uh, and this starts basically with the ownership and accountability. Once you take ownership, once you take accountability, uh, the rest becomes uh, rest becomes simpler. Now, just to show you how it would work in practice, uh, let's look at the four elements here: intelligence, capability, outcome, and returns. And let's say that you're just starting out, your company is just starting out and you have very uh, basic maturity in terms of data and AI and your level of intelligence right now is that you can build, build uh, descriptive dashboards and that's the level of intelligence. You, you can use this uh, intelligence to find the right outcome and let's say if you have uh, high visibility uh, as a value then uh, let's say you identify that the outcome uh, is to improve your uh, error rate or basically improve your poka yoke process. Then you can you can choose that particular outcome uh, for that level of maturity and choose the returns as reduction in the in the quality cost. And then you start working on your capability. You say, OK, so I'm, I'm going to uh, improve my traceability. I'm going to improve my monitoring. And with that, I will be able to uh, improve my mistake proofing uh, okay process and reduce the quality cost. So this is the first level. Now ask your organization to reinvest this savings that you've created into the next level. So next level, let's say you build more intelligence. So you have now you are able to do uh, now you're able to detect trends and patterns. Uh, for at this level, you might find another outcome, which is to improve your forecasting. And the returns that you're looking for is in terms of lower sourcing costs. So here again, once again, you look at uh, the capability that you have to build, you reinvest your savings, and now you're working on dynamic processes and digital workflows. And then you go ahead with the third level and the fourth level. So this is a way where you can continuously uh, understand what capabilities you have from a data and AI perspective. You match this with the manufacturing capability, organization capability. You look for the outcomes that you think will give you the highest amount of returns, and then you execute uh, the project, you execute the program in uh, to deliver that impact. And if you keep doing that, you will see that you will start uh, developing more capabilities. You start uh, monetizing your uh, initiatives more and more easily. Uh, eventually, when you start doing this uh, over a period of time, you will create uh, you create a backlog of different activities that you want to do. So you might have you might have a backlog for your analytics strategy. You might have a you will have a backlog for your manufacturing capability, and you will have a backlog for your business strategy and for the for the for the leadership uh, strategy. And you can this is what you are aiming for because we know that we cannot uh, solve all the problems overnight. We need to create this kind of backlog, and we need to own this backlog. 
and if you uh, this is uh, this backlog is or uh, this uh, work stream something that I built. Uh, you can take this as a base and you can start building uh, your own. This is what will give you the clarity, and this is this will be your first step uh, in the in the in the journey of readiness. Uh, and if you want to kind of uh, uh, if you want to uh, if you want some support on putting this information together, or basically if you want uh, if you want support in identifying the right, right outcomes, I have created a simple uh, canvas, a simple framework which you can use. Uh, this, the benefit of this framework is that it does not just focus on the analytics bit or the outcome bit, but it, but it actually covers all the different aspects uh, of, of readiness that we've spoken about. We, 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 we capture the, the leadership uh, principle, we, we, uh, we capture the strategy, capability and analytics. So again, this is a very simple framework, but it's a good starting point. So you can you you take this uh, you take this framework and then uh, with your experience you make it your own. So with this uh, I would like to end uh, the presentation. We're coming to the end of the presentation. Just uh, some key kind of uh, takeaways, parting thoughts. The monetization starts with ownership and it doesn't stop until the financial performance is achieved. If you're not uh, if you're not uh, uh, not achieve the financial performance, your monetization journey is is incomplete. Uh, digital manufacturing needs new set of capabilities of agility and, and responsiveness. Uh, there are significant gaps and these gaps hamper the organization's ability to monetize the digital manufacturing. Uh, monetization requires a focus on business outcomes and the matching of capability with, with intelligence. And finally, the monetization readiness means uh, that you are aware of the potential of the, of the data and AI assets. Uh, and and you have a plan to develop the corresponding business capability to generate the outcomes and returns. And with this, uh, I would like to end uh, the presentation. Uh, thank you so much thank you for listening in. If you have any questions or comments, please, uh, please do comment. Thank you.